Vagrant. the shofar, the horn of God we call it. I've heard it all my life. Ah, him for thousands of years it's called my people to prayer and repentance and the worship of Almighty God. Ah, but this is not the story of how God called us to him, no. It's the story of how he came to us through his son, Jesus. My name is Nicodemus. I'm a judge in the Jewish Supreme Court. That's a Sanhedrin. Uh, we are responsible for the religious and the political and even the personal affairs of my people. And our authority is never, never questioned. Well, never questioned, that is, until this Jesus came along claiming to be, of all things, the Messiah. <laughs> the, 
Jesus. Well, it would have been easy to go along with the crowds and condemn him. But I perceived that Jesus had something, something that I wanted, something that I needed desperately. My name is Mary, and I come from Magdala on the west shore of the Sea of Galilee. I was looked on as a loose woman who had no morals, willing to sell herself for another day's bread. So when I heard of this Jesus, he really didn't mean that much to me. You see, the Pharisees, they said he was a blasphemer, an imposter, and I was uneducated, so who was I to question them? But still, when you have nothing, I guess you have nothing to lose. So I became curious about this man that called himself the Son of God. Ugh, every day it's the same woman! The same question! Peter, are your fish fresh? Ah, trust me, woman! The fish are fresh! My name is Peter. Well, at least that's the name Jesus gave me. I was born and raised Simon. Simon Barjona, to be exact. Well, I, I was a fisherman. It's an ordinary job. You, you get to use your hands a lot. But, but it taught me to become a shrewd judge of character. So when I met this Jesus, oh, I knew right away here was a man I could trust. Oh, he made such a difference in my life. Oh, in, in all of our lives. And that's what we're here to talk to you about tonight. His plan, the master's plan. Uh, that's right, my friend. When Jesus came among us, we, the religious leaders, we didn't recognize him. Uh, do you have something Rather against the unschooled Nicodemus? No. Peter, uh, semantics, just a misunderstanding of terms. Uh, those whom shall I say did not have the schooling to recognize him. Nah, those who shall I say did not have the opportunities uh, those like who I had did. to work for a living. Or beg, or steal for a living. Oh, uh, well, let it be said that those of us who should have recognized him did not, and those who should not have did. And his story was there in the prophecies the whole time, and we missed it. Our story begins like so many love stories. Boy meets girl. Now, there was a young carpenter named Joseph. Ooh, but his mind was in on carpentry, though. <laughs> and a sweet little Jewish girl named Mary. And our story begins like this. <clears throat> Wait, why me? I've seen lots of beautiful girls all around the world, maybe hundreds or so. But none had the wonderful charm as the girl who disarms him with one hello. The face of an angel. <gasps> the voice of a bird. <laughs> a beauty that touched his soul beyond the grasp of words. <laughs> if anyone's listening in heaven, please tell me, could she be? My search is over Could she be the one true love for me? In a thousand years In a thousand lives You 
those flowers now. That was a pretty good gag if I say so myself. Well, that's what he gets for hanging out with fishermen. <laughs> well, young Mary, she was a devout girl and a virgin. Angel Gabriel came to her and said that she was about to become pregnant by the Holy Spirit, that she had been chosen to be the mother of God's own son, that she was blessed above all women. She was about to give birth to the Messiah, the Savior of the world. You might say that she was the first New Testament believer, because when she chose to obey God, she risked losing everything, her oh. family, her reputation, and even the love of the man she was about to marry. Oh, it took incredible faith to do what Mary did. And the angel had a visit with her husband-to-be, Joseph, as well. And, and he, too, believed and married this lovely young girl who was already with child. Still, things didn't get any easier for Mary and Joseph as the months went along. I could hardly believe it when she told me that her son had born, was born in a stable. He was just... Would have kept him apart from the children that he came to rescue, limited to some elite few. When he was the only child who had ever asked to. precious child ever born close to her heart. that I could hold you, precious Lamb of God, my Son, to think that I am blessed by you, how could I be? a 
beautiful baby. Oh, and those hands! They look like fishermen's hands to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus grew. Yeah, but he learned his uh, father Joseph's trade as a carpenter and his heavenly father's ways. Well, Mary told me another story about Jesus. He was a young boy, maybe 12, a dangerous age, old enough to know better, but young enough to do otherwise. So Mary, Joseph, and Jesus had traveled to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. When upon their return, Joseph was traveling with the men and Mary with the women, and neither of them had the boy. Now, just for a moment, put yourselves in their shoes. I mean, you know who Jesus is. The Lord above knows who Jesus is. And you just lost him? Oh, oh. well, back they went to Jerusalem, and there he was in the temple asking questions among us, the teachers. I asked Mary what she did, because I know what I would have thought about doing. But I can only imagine as her son's eyes met hers, and he began answering her worried questions and then told her that he'd been about his father's business. You know, it, it was my kid brother Andrew that introduced me to the Lord. The best thing that kid ever did for me, I'll tell you. Andrew was always more spiritual than I was, and he started following John the Baptist and listening to his teachings. And one day he decided he was going to be baptized. Oh, Andrew was, was, always had a knack for being at the right place in the right time. He, he, was, he was standing on the shores of the Jordan River when, when who steps in but Jesus of Nazareth. Imagine that, the Lord allowing himself to be baptized by John. Oh, he, Andrew said some things happened. Uh, a dove came down and he heard a, a voice from heaven. Uh, I, I gotta admit, I, I didn't believe it all at first, but, but Andrew was hard to fool, you know. So when he had told me that he had met the long awaited Messiah, I knew. I, uh, I knew, but whew, you, you don't want anyone to think you don't have both oars in the water or anything, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 no. That you're a brick shy of a full load. <laughs> Oh, Nicodemus! Okay, in your language, that, um, I did not have my full mental capabilities. <laughs> so, we waited. <laughs> then one day, we were fishing in the Sea of Galilee, just tossing our nets in and gathering the fish and, and collecting them, and we saw Jesus walking down the shoreline. I'll never forget what he said to us. He said, come, and I will make you fishers of men. That's it. Nothing else. Come, follow me. Well, we, we did. <laughs> why? I, I, I don't know. Have you ever done anything and you, you just don't know why? It, it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. So, so we left everything, all our nets and boats and oars, and we went to be with the Lord. And, and our lives would never be the same again. Only yesterday, Jesus was choosing the other men to follow him. First was my kid brother, Andrew and I. Andrew, good to see you, brother, good to see you. And then, then James and John. <laughs> good guy. Oh, and Philip. How are you, Philip? Another fisherman. Very, very loyal he was. Oh, oh and then, then there was Bartholomew. Now, here was a guy. <laughs> He really knew his scriptures. Let me out you. There, there you go, okay? And then Thomas. Thomas always had to see things to believe things. Oh, and then Matthew. Whew, here was an odd pick of the litter. He, he was a tax collector. He took money from his own people and gave it to the Romans. Oh, and then James, the son of Alphaeus. Whew, he was a scrawny guy, but boy, you always knew what he had on his mind. And then Simon and Thaddeus, they were the dreamers of the group. They wanted to see a great nation of Israel. And Judas was the last of us. He carried the purse strings for the group. That's all of us, as different from each other as the night is from day. And we each heard and answered the call of Jesus Christ. Ooh, and our lives would never again be average or ordinary. Believe it, we were going to change the world. <laughs> change the world. Yes, we Oh, oh. Don't be.
wasn't always easy. Sometimes I wonder how many of us would have said, here I am, Lord, if he had told us what to expect or what we'd be asked to give up. But ignorance, if not bliss, is a blessing. And I guess I had it easier than most. I mean, I had no husband. But the other women, they had something to lose. A regular income, a regular meal time, a regular home life, and a regular husband. Ah, oh, husbands and wives, is there anything more delightful than seeing a happily married couple? No, ha, unless it's a newly married couple. Oh, <laughs> yes, Ooh. and at their wedding, one of Israel's most sacred... I am raucous! <laughs> and solemn occasion. And occasion. <laughs> I love a fisherman. A oh. wedding, oh, please. What? Now, the Lord loved to see people happy. He just loved to see people enjoying themselves. Ah, uh, indeed he did. But my brothers in the synagogue criticized him for that, and more than once for how did they put it? Oh yes, consorting with sinners and drunkards. Well, that's where he knew he could find hearts oh, that could be just changed. Playing. Oh, and if you think changing a heart of stone into a heart of flesh is a miracle, listen to this. <laughs> hey, I love it. Everything is all right with the world. Oh, yes. The sacred promises, the traditional dancing. And, and the wine ran out. The wine, the wine ran out. 
So, Mary, always watching, realizes that the bride, or her family and the bridegroom will just be devastated. Oh, no. It was a social disaster to run out of food or wine at such an occasion. Well, she approaches her son, has a few words with him, and then simply tells the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now, in every Jewish household, there were jars and jugs that were set aside for water for you know, things like ceremonial washings and cleaning around the house. Oh, then Jesus told the servants to fill those jugs with water and, and draw from it and present it to the host. Think of how those servants must have felt. They didn't know the stranger from Nazareth. And still, they did as they were instructed. The water had been turned into the very finest of wine. Something right. extraordinary <laughs> created out of what was Ooh. once ordinary. Ah, and the host was impressed, but not with Jesus. He thought the bridegroom had saved the best until last. <laughs> and then the party really started! <laughs> such incredible things over the, the next few days. We just knew he had to be the son of God. Oh, then one day, a, a man came to Jesus asking for his help. I knew him as Jairus, the, the ruler of the synagogue in Capernaum, my, my hometown. His daughter was sick, almost, almost dead, and he wanted Jesus to heal her. Well, Jesus agreed, so, so we started on our journey. Oh, it, it was so hot and and dry, and the wind swirled around us as we traveled. And then in the distance, we saw someone coming. Oh, when he reached us, he, he informed us that we were too late. Jairus' daughter was hardly dead. But you know what? Jesus didn't stop. He didn't even hesitate. He just kept walking down that dusty road. <laughs> And a fear gripped the crowd that day Jairus home When the doctor sadly said, your daughter's gone You hear the parents' heartbreak, you hear them cry and moan Their little girl is only 12 years old
such incredible things over the next few days. We, we knew he had to be the son of God, and, and we had plans in our mind for, for a new kingdom. We, we expected to see, well, we, we wanted to see a, a, a great angelic host marching over the horizon to take back from Rome what was rightfully ours. Oh, our dreams were such folly. Why, why, we even called James and John the sons of thunder. What a pretense that turned out to be. Come to find out their mother was acting as their agent. Ha! And this woman, she really knew talent when she saw it. And she wasn't afraid to let the Lord know either. You know, in case he missed it. Ha! Oh, that woman was crazy, I tell oh, you. Oh, Jesus, Lord. I say, you hold up. We have to talk. Oh, just look at this place. Don't you ever clean it up. You got things laying around. And... What is that wonderful fish smell? <laughs> is it you? <laughs> and you're laughing. So you must smell better than him. <laughs> you don't. Oh, what am I stepping in? Oh, Lord, I see you. We have to talk. Oh, no. Oh, how's your mother? Oh, lovely woman. Stop it. Oh, I'm so thin you're looking and so tired. So you should sit. Sit. Move over. A little more. When you're in your kingdom, Lord, you'll need a right hand. some wonderful ideas for your sermons. They could be real crap pleasers. <laughs> oh, and another thing. You know those parables of yours? Nobody understands them. Oh, what? Oh, you. oh, I'm supposed to be embarrassing on your mother. We saw what James and John and their mother were up to, and we argued amongst ourselves. We... We, the chosen ones, argued as to who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, the Lord was always a great one for understatement. He, he picked up a child, and with that child showed us what it was we must become. Trusting, full of faith, full of questions, but still full of faith. Not easy commandments, are they? 
to tell us we have to become like little children. Children, it's supper time. Run home. You don't want to get in trouble with your mothers now. That makes me feel so young again. <laughs> Obviously, it did not have the same effect on you, my friend. Come on, let me oh, help you up. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> used a variety of things to oh. help us to see differently. We, mm -hmm. we wanted to change, to see, the, see things the way he did, but it's hard, you know, when you've mm. been raised in a particular way. Some habits are just hard to break. <laughs> well, like the way we treated the Samaritans, for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I don't know why we treated them so poorly. I, I guess it was kind of a tradition to look down on the Samaritans. Yes, well, Jesus was passing through one of their villages one day, and he went and stopped at a well, asked a woman there for a drink, a Samaritan woman. <laughs> now, you and I wouldn't be caught dead speaking to a Samaritan, and this woman knew this. But Jesus turned the tables on her, Peter, and he said, if you knew who I am, you would ask me for a drink of living water. Oh, that, that got her curiosity mm. up, and, and she replied, sir... You have nothing to draw this water with. How, how are you going to get the living water? Well, then he explained that everyone who drinks from this well will get thirsty again. But anyone who drinks the water he gives, well, 
they'll never thirst again. And then Jesus began to tell this woman things about her life that only God could have known. Now then she knew she had met the long-awaited Messiah. And she reached out to him. And he filled her life to overflowing, and his love washed away her sin. chose some unlikely characters to follow him, Levi, for example. Yes, well, he was of the tribe of Levi, a descendant of those, and he worked for the Roman governor as a tax collector, and even worse, he overcharged his people and then pocketed the difference. Then one day, Jesus gave a simple invitation, follow me, and for reasons he could never explain, uh, he left everything and everyone to be with the Lord. And Jesus called him Matthew. There was no other one who knew what I'd done, but chose me in spite of my sin. But the look in his eyes caught my heart by surprise. I found so much more than a friend. I did not deserve his forgiveness, but I bless that glorious day.
quiet encounters like that became fewer and farther between. Jesus' notoriety was growing, and words spread like wildfire throughout the land. People came from miles around to witness him work his wonders. And everywhere Jesus went, the crowds followed. And some were merely curious, but others, they were desperate for healing. Jesus. And Jesus was glad to heal him, but he realized that he had an even greater need mm. to be forgiven of his sins. And so Jesus forgave him. Well, the people were amazed, <laughs> but the Pharisees, they were angry. They said, who is this man who dares to forgive sins? He's acting like God himself. Well, Jesus knew what the Pharisees were thinking. Mm -hmm. So he asked them, which is easier to say to the sick, your sins are forgiven, or to say, Arise, take up your bed, and walk. Hmm. And so that everyone would know that he had the power to do both, that is, to forgive sin and also to heal sick bodies, he said to the man, Rise, take up your bed, and go home. The man left to his feet shouting, My, my sins are forgiven. Hmm. I am healed. Glory to God. Yes. <laughs> oh, the people saw Jesus do many miraculous things. Oh, that's the trouble with you guys. You let your minds do all the thinking. What a... Beg your pardon? Okay, perhaps what he means is 
Maybe your brothers in the Sanhedrin might have heard more if they had let their hearts do some of the thinking and not just their minds. Well, you have to admit that some of the things that Jesus said, staggering. Yes, he, he said, the Father and I are one. Whoever mm -hmm. has seen me has seen the Father. That did not sit well with the high priest. He called that blasphemy. Well, he also said that no one can come to the Father except through me. Mm, he wasn't making any points with the religious leaders with that one either. As far as we were concerned at that time, Jesus was just another in a long line of charlatans that had come along to, that means pretenders. I had know what along. that means! Oh. Uh, I know what okay. that means. Okay. Uh, was another pretender who had come along claiming to be a messiah, uh, undermining their authority and even questioning their character. Well, for almost 60 years we had been under the thumb of the Roman Empire. We didn't have a voice in our own government. We were little better than slaves in the eyes of the world. No, man! Carry this for me! Carry this for me! Peter! Get going! That chest is too Get heavy going. for that old man to carry! Hey, this happens Get down there. in Jerusalem every day. The Romans don't care about the Jews. This is just an example of one of their laws. The people in Jerusalem, we were crying out. We were hoping and praying. Could this Jesus be the Messiah? who would come and overthrow those Romans who persecute us so? Well, I was in Jerusalem, as was Jesus at the time of the feast, and so I thought, I'll search him out. But it was risky business for a man of my reputation to be seen with such a, re a revolutionary. So I waited for the cover of darkness. I had so many questions, so stirring. Who is this man? Could he be the one? Could he be the one? Please, oh God, say my search is over. Could he be the one true hope to set us free? In a thousand years, the one I need. Amazing. The first words that Jesus spoke to me were, they were not answers to my questions. They were statements. They were more like commands. And they were confusing. He said to me, Nicodemus, in order for you to even enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. Well, it sounded so silly. I thought he was playing mind games or word games or riddles. And, and so I said, Master, I'm an old man. How can I be born again? And then I looked into his eyes, and I saw such intelligence, and I saw such love. You see, Jesus wasn't speaking about a physical birth but a spiritual birth into a whole new way of living, full of peace and joy. Oh, and then he spoke the most beautiful words to me. They ring in the hearts of every person who follows him to this day. I was the first one to hear them, you know. He said, Nicodemus, my father so loved the world that he gave me his son so that everyone who believes in me will never die, not eternally, but have everlasting life. Whoa, I had left my meeting convinced I had met the long-awaited Messiah. I, I had stood face to face with the Son of God. Oh, the Son of Jesus worked a miracle in my life, too. I was caught up in an unfeeling, cynical world, just trying to make a living. Beg a little here, steal a little there. But 
my real deceit came with that elusive thing called love. Whether you sell it on the streets or give it away or just mouth the words, I love you, I felt like it was a lie. And while I was searching for love, I was pretending to love. And the pretense was pretty thin. But I made a living. I guess some folks just get dealt the kind of hand in life that makes life and love easy. But to me, love was something that was bought or sold. Strictly business. And the stakes were high and dangerous. You see, the trick was just to not get caught. Well, I got caught. And they dragged me out into the streets, naked, to be stoned for my sins. But I felt relieved. And I knew the punishment already. And even though I was so scared, I was desperately afraid. Somewhere in some small part of my mind, I thought, Finally, this is over. But then I found myself thrown in front of him, not outside of the city, not up against some sun-baked wall, but in front of him. They asked him his verdict, and then he did the strangest thing. He leaned down, and he began writing in the sand. I couldn't read what he wrote. But then he said the most astounding thing I've ever heard anyone say. He said, if there is one of you without sin, let him cast the first stone. And I thought, this is it. Now it's him and me, and we're both going to die. But nobody moved. I could barely breathe. But then I heard something, and I turned and I saw that they were leaving, all of them. And after they'd gone away, he asked me where they went, and I said, they're gone, sir. And he said, then I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Three words, <laughs> sin no more. You know, if just once somebody would have said to me, Mary, stop what you're doing because they loved me, I would have stopped. He took a big risk that day. And I'm not just talking about a physical risk. Because when he chose to share in my embarrassment and my shame, he did it without any guarantees because I could have easily just have spit in his face. But when I looked into his eyes, I saw that he felt my pain. And then with nothing to gain for himself, he gave me his forgiveness and his love. I'm 
not what he could get, but for what he could give to me. And the feelings that I had inside, I could not bear. So I washed his feet with my tears and dried them with my hair. But the crowd all around said it was a disgrace. That he thought that I'd been out of place Till I looked through my tears up into his face And I knew he loved me He felt the pain inside of me He took me by the hand And made me see That he could take a life free Everything I put myself through Jesus, I'm so glad I of what Jesus had done for Mary and his other miracles and teachings spread quickly throughout the land. Everywhere we went, people wanted to see more miracles and more teachings. Yes, and it wasn't unusual to see the religious leaders sprinkled amongst the crowd. We often wondered what it was they wanted. Were they spying? Or taking what? notes or names? Some but seeking new life, like I was. Oh, the, the schedule was getting out of hand. We, we would barely be settled in one spot, and, and we be up and moving again. And sometimes the crush of the crowd was overwhelming, but it was at moments like those where we felt it. We couldn't name it then, yeah. but it was life, and living had never felt like this before. Uh, he said he had come to give us oh, life. That he did, abundantly. Ah, abundantly. Oh, oh, hello. of living water shall flow from him. Are you a prophet? Are you Elijah? Are you a king? Simon, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. I say you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God.
blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. of Passover was coming, a time for family, Mary, for friends, and for remembering that after hundreds of years of slavery in Egypt, God's chosen people were finally free. Yes, we were celebrating our lives released uh, from bondage. They weren't, not, not really, because mm -hmm. we still wanted to see a great nation of Israel set up right here in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. one that we could touch and see. Yes. I, I can't believe how blind we were. Jesus said it himself. He would come into Jerusalem surrounded by love and in less than a week leave surrounded by hate. Mm. He would be rejected mm. by his own people. Yes, and scourged and crucified by the Romans. Oh, but that and, and this was incredible. In three days he would live again, mm. arise from the grave. By the power of God. Ah, oh. oh, Jerusalem. When Passover is near, Jerusalem is transformed, crowded, full yeah. of excitement. Good. The food and the spices from the merchant's stalls smell more pungent. The colors seem more vibrant. There's an expectancy. Maybe this year in Jerusalem the Messiah will come. Oh, he can, Mary. And not on horseback. And not on a chariot. But on a donkey. Oh. A beast of burden. A servant animal for the servant king. Well, the people knew of Jesus. And when he arrived, they went wild. Yes! <laughs> He's coming.
figured Jesus had made a mistake. I mean, the people loved him. They, they called him their king. With the notoriety he was getting, surely Herod and Rome would have to stand up and take notice that here was the true king of Israel. Oh, they did notice all right, my friend. Especially when Christ tore through the temple. He threw out the money changers and the merchants. He's a blasphemer. He says the temple is his house. I say he should be arrested. Arrest him? Now? Just look at those people. They adore this Jesus. If we arrest him, it would start a riot. No! First, we must discredit him. We must trip him up somehow. We must trap him with his own words. The religious leaders were trying to get Jesus to contradict either one of the religious or the civil laws, and so they asked him this question. Rabbi, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? They thought they had him. If he were to say pay taxes to Caesar, then surely he could not be of God. No, and if he said not to pay taxes, then they'd turn him over to the Romans for treason. But Jesus just scoffed at them, and he said, You hypocrites! Why are you trying to trap me? And then he pulled out a coin. He said, Whose image is on this coin? And they, of course, said, It's Caesar's image. And he said, And whose image is stamped on your life? And they said, It's God's. Then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. Jesus had beaten them at their own game. Oh, but still they persisted. They asked another, Rabbi, in all the commandments, which is the greatest? The greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second, which is like it, is to love thy neighbor as thyself. On these hang the law and the prophets. These teachers, they sit in Moses' seat, and so you must do as they say, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They lay heavy burdens on men's shoulders, and they do not lift a finger to help them. He made fools of us. What's worse, the people love him for doing so. We're losing control. We cannot let this continue much longer. The Passover is only a few days away. By then, he will have the entire city on his side.
my friend. And Jesus stepped on some toes this time. See, these money changers and merchants, they were doing commerce in the temple precincts, and that is against our sacred laws. And they were doing so at unfair and victimizing prices. Now, uh, Annas, the most powerful man in the Sanhedrin, he could afford a few financial losses. What he could not afford was a loss of face. And the same could be said for Caiaphas, his son-in-law, the current high priest. Uh, Peter, a showdown was coming. Oh, they, they were jealous of Jesus' miracles and teachings, and, and they were afraid that his growing popularity would upset the delicate balance they had with the Roman government. And Jesus had to go. But how? Assassination? Not likely. He was always surrounded by people, especially the twelve. Twelve. Maybe there was the weak link. Maybe just one of the twelve had grown disillusioned with Jesus. I wanted very much to have this Passover meal with you before I suffer. And I tell you truly, I will not eat of it again until all is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. This bread is my body, broken for you. Take and eat, and as you do, do so in remembrance of me. This cup is my blood, offered up for you. Take and drink, and as you do, do so in remembrance of me. I tell you the truth, one of you seated here tonight will betray me. Why is it so dark inside this room? You think that at a feast they would be smiling. I'm feeling some impending sense of doom. I never have been known for my good timing. Things aren't working out as I had planned. I'm not even sure if he's the son of man. Tasting taste a little sour. Maybe it's just me, I feel so pain. Maybe it's the tension of the hour. Why is it so hard to just believe? Is it him all 30 silver coins I need? this 
new and untried army their marching orders that night. To love one another as he had loved us. I, I told him I loved him, that, that I would do anything for him, no matter what the cost. Then I, I denied him. Not once, but, but three times. Imagine it, me, Peter, the rock. We, we went in the garden to pray. Oh, Jesus prayed. We, we all fell asleep. And that's when our, our dreams turned into nightmare. There were men with, with knives and swords and torches. And, and Judas, Judas walked right up to Jesus and he kissed him. The, the guard seized him. I, I had to protect him. I, I grabbed a sword. I, I just started swinging at it, and it grew my heart. Then, then with just his words, Jesus stopped me. Put it away. Let it happen. The, the, the best I had done was, was to cut off someone's ear and, Jesus healed it. He, he healed it and they still took him away. It, it all fell apart from there. We, we, we all scattered just like Jesus said we would. I, I followed at a safe distance. I, I was afraid. There were guards and soldiers. I just wanted it to go back, to go back to like it was just a few days, a few days before. I remember when I first met Jesus, standing on the seashore, there I saw him. Then he said, hey, Peter. You'll never fish again. Come and travel with me, and we will fish for men. Seems like yesterday, like yesterday. Then, then there was a time when 5,000 folks were fed with just two little fishes and five loaves of bread. He broke it and blessed it, and we passed it all around. Then when we were finished, 12 baskets full were found. <laughs> Once out on a boat, upon an angry sea, I saw him walk on water. As he passed by me, I said, may I come after? He said, come on to me. And when I started seeking, rescued me. Looking back on all our times together, we shared a bond that no one could sever. I, I saw him heal the sick ones, he raised men from the dead, and lives were changed forever by just the words he Yesterday, like yesterday. And then I, I found myself in the courtyard of the high priest, and the servant girl said, I know you, you were with that Jesus. And I, I said, no. And another one said, weren't you with Jesus? And I said, no. And another, and I said, no, no, I, I don't know him. And then the clock rolled, and I realized what I had done. And I went out, and I wept bitterly all over. Oh, yeah.
I was awakened out of a sound sleep. In the middle of the night, rushed to the strangest meeting of the Sanhedrin. That's when they brought Jesus in. My brothers hated him so. And it was his failure to conform, his uh, public rebukes of their hypocrisy. And so they plotted his death. But they could not carry out capital punishment. That was the privilege of Roman law. And to complicate matters, Jesus was very popular with the people. The threat of a riot was great. Well, they had a solution. Secret and swift arrest and trial, and then force Pilate to do their dirty work. This trial. This trial was a mockery of justice from start to finish. My brothers in the Sanhedrin blatantly broke our sacred laws that night. For one, no trials are to be held at night, but this one was. There weren't enough, weren't enough brothers present for a quorum. And still they went ahead with the trial. And if witnesses are brought in against the accused, then witnesses must be produced for the defense. No witnesses spoke in Jesus' defense. Not even me. Their witnesses? The best story that they could come up with was that on one occasion Jesus had said he would tear down the temple and rebuild it again in three days. What's well, the offense? Oh, this trial was going nowhere until Caiaphas asked Jesus this baited question. Jesus! Are you the son of the most high God? Are you the Messiah? It was his own true confession that condemned him to death. He answered, I am. Oh, Caiaphas tore his robes. He shouted at the top of his lungs, That is blasphemy! What more do we need to condemn him? He has made himself one with our God. Finally, 24 hours must pass before the accused is sentenced, but by dawn he's brought before Pilate. Oh, Pilate was so relieved to hear that Jesus was a Galilean. He sent him off to Herod, the governor of that province. He was in town, and he had been most anxious to meet this miracle man, Jesus. But when the Lord stood before him and would not answer his questions, oh, that angered Herod. He ordered his soldiers to give Jesus the royal treatment. Oh, they beat him. In anger, he sent him back to Pilate. Now Pilate's back is against the wall. He cannot find a crime that is serious enough to warrant his death. But he must appease these priests and maintain political stability. So he ordered his soldiers to give Jesus a scourging. Oh. Even the Romans call scourgings halfway death. Still, this did not satisfy the priests. So Pilate took it to the people. I find no fault in him, this king of Jews. What has he done? What has he done? What has he done? What has he done? As is the custom, I release to you one prisoner. of this man's blood. It is your and your responsibility.
then Pilate released Barabbas to the people. And he turned Jesus over to the executioners. Oh, Judas. Judas. Oh, when Judas heard what was about to happen, he was desperate with remorse. He threw the betrayal money at the feet of the priests and the, and the rabbis, but there was nothing he could do. It was too late, and he knew it. Then he went out and hung himself. All over me, all over me, I've got the blood of an innocent man all over me. He never did anything to hurt anyone. He said something about being God.
And I will make you fishers of men. Cried when I heard his first word. No. Listen to my words, Nicodemus. You must be born again. I kissed away his sorrow. Neither do I condemn you, Mary. Go and sin no more. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. I thirst. Oh, I'll run to you. When I hear you call my name out in the night, I'll run to you. Hold you close, hold you tight. John. Please, take care of my mother, Mary. Oh, oh, I wish that I could hold you. Precious Lamb of God, my son. It, it was all a sham, a lie. All of the teachings, all of his healings, his promises, just the ravings of a madman, a lunatic. So why don't you go back to your church and profess, profess and marry? He, he's left you just like everyone else. How's it going to be the mother of the king now, your highness? So he's the king, you say. Who you claim to be? 
thirsty. I am tired. Father, I am a son. My I loved them, but they didn't want to see the truth of the price I'd pay so their lives could be free. As the sword has pierced my side, my love will pierce them through. <laughs> Father, please forgive them, for they know not what they do. My God.
I'm such a fortunate man. So blessed. I have an education. I sat at the feet of some of the most brilliant minds in all of Israel. But, you know, not one of them had answer for my burning questions. Why I'm here. It took a carpenter to answer my questions. A carpenter. Fascinating thing about Jesus is that he never asked me to take my head, put it on a shelf, or commit intellectual suicide. No. In fact, the opposite is true. He invited my questions. He wanted me to ask. Then he answered them, every one of them. And they were the right answers. You see, I'm confident that he'll do the same thing for you. Ask your questions, but be honest. Be honest. And when he answers your questions, do what I did. I entrusted my life, my soul, into the hands of Jesus. And I was born again. Born again. Have you been hurt once, twice, more times than you care to remember? Have you vowed never again to trust your heart to another? That was me. I had been looking for love in all the wrong places, trying to fill an emptiness that I couldn't even name. But I'm here tonight to encourage you to trust just once more. Jesus will love you like you have never been loved. And he will not hurt you like others. He will not condemn you. He will not rebuke you. And he will not judge you. And he will never, never leave you. So trust your heart to the love of Jesus Christ. And that elusive thing called love will become a precious reality in your life as it has in mine. You know, it, it was hard for a man like me to follow anyone. I was used to having my own way and making my own way. I worked hard and thrived on reckless adventure, and I prided myself on, on needing nothing from anyone. I was a leader, not a follower. But I never met a man like Jesus. Here was a rugged carpenter strong enough to take on anything, anything the world threw at him. Yet he was gentle and kind. So I, I found it easy to follow the Lord because he commanded my respect and he earned my trust over and over and over again. But when the going got tough, I was nowhere to be found. I was more worried about saving my own neck than standing with my friend, my Lord. But he kept on loving me and believing in me. He, he, he forgave every weakness, every failure, and he empowered me with his Holy Spirit to teach me the kind of man that God wanted me to be. So, oh, my friends, where are you in life tonight? Do you need forgiveness? Are you ready for a real adventure? Because I promise you, you can have both if you choose to follow Jesus Christ. And then eternal life! What more could a man want? I live, I live, because Jesus is risen, I live. 